If you go in cheap, you're gonna get customers that can't afford to pay more. So then you're gonna raise your prices because you can't afford to work at cost forever. And then you're gonna lose all those customers because they'll go to the next guy that's just started out that's doing that exact same thing. If you're happy to work hard for good money, you always make money. So I've been thinking a lot lately and I, I thought I'd better make a video about your hourly running costs. I just feel like a lot of people overlook this when it comes to their business. And it's such a simple and important thing to know about your business is what your hourly running cost is. So you get caught up in thinking you're making less money or making more money than, than you think you might be. So it's, yeah, it's just so important to understand all of the things about running it, running a business and making sure that you're making profit because if you're not making profit, you might as well just go work for someone else. A lot of people, I watch a lot of automotive, especially automotive obviously, because that's the sort of thing I'm into, but businesses on social media and you know, a few of them are doing really well, but I think the biggest thing that people forget is not knowing their hourly running cost. When I started, I've got a few businesses and when, before I start any business, I'll do a bit of a business plan and figure out like what the business is gonna do, you know, what my services will be and what that business needs to make per hour. Say that business operates, you know, cause I only do small businesses, this would be completely different with big businesses. But if you have a business and it's only got one staff, what is that business like? What does that need to charge per hour to cover its costs? And then that way you can go, all right, so if I put two people on, I've got an additional labor cost but then that reduces the amount I need to charge per person. So then you can work, we figure out how much staff you need to have to make it viable as far as what you're charging to your customers, but what you're gonna get back from your investment. So like this shop here, I actually have decided not to run it as a full on um, mechanical shop. I'm just doing it mainly. I take on work just to get content from my YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel, because I worked out originally I was going to be charging 110 an hour, which is very like fairly competitive. Most people charge around 130 down here because my hourly running costs of this shop is $55 an hour. So then at that I'd be making 55 bucks an hour working in here, which is not a bad wicket. I earn more than that working in my other businesses. So uh, which have lower hourly running costs. So I've decided to focus my energy on that and then just use this more as a hobby shop and for YouTube. In saying that, it is 800 bucks a week, so it's a fair bit of money to pay out every week for a hobby. I'm making it work at the moment, so it seems to be cool. But the problem was, was when I thought, oh, all right, well then I'll raise my hourly costs to make this co shop more efficient. I was looking at, all right, I really need to charge around the $150 an hour, which is what I charge in my other businesses to make it viable. But you know, people don't really want to pay that for you to do work on their car, even if it's custom work, you know? So I ended up having to sort of scrap the idea of the shop. I've obviously not given up on it and I still take on work and whatnot, but yeah, you really do. It's so important to understand your hourly running costs because if you don't, uh, you're setting yourself up to fail. You know, I, I see so many mechanics out there that have, granted they're not doing custom car stuff, they're just doing servicing, which should technically be better money. They're just not running things right. You know, you've got four or five staff running around all day you should be able to turn over 20 grand a week, you know, easy, easy. But these shops are just scraping by, you know, and you just go, I just don't understand it. But I just think there's the billable hours isn't there. People are not charging properly for the time that they're spending. I think a lot of people are too scared to charge what the job should actually cost. So they, every single job, they're cutting the costs on it, which then they cut it back to their, basically their cost of running their shop. Um, and because they don't understand the hourly running costs, they're just running at a loss. You know, I, I don't see any, point in that. I used to have, a, I've had businesses with lots of staff and now I have a couple businesses which I basically run by myself. Uh, I have a bookkeeper which takes care of all the back end stuff but yeah as far as the labour work it's all me because I, I work hard you know I work hard and I understand that well I guess it, for me I would rather work a little bit harder and put the money in my pocket than subby it all out and make a little bit if that makes sense. Yeah, fair enough. Me and my brother have got a construction company that we're starting and if that goes well, well then, all right, well I won't have the time to do this, so then I probably would have to hire someone in to help me here. But as much as you can, especially when you first start out, you're just going to have to work a little bit harder. Even if you've, like me, I've been in business nearly my whole life, I still had to start, every business I start, I work in. Because I understand that for the first six to 12 months, the money's just not there to pay you. You can't afford to pay yourself. So you've just got to be out of okay to go, all right, well, you know, and I guess granted in my position that I've got other businesses that can cover me, you know, uh, it takes a profit away from that business, but then everything just runs at an even loss, I guess you could say, but nothing's going backwards. Uh, I can pull myself out and put myself somewhere else for three to six months easily. 
and not get draw a wage um, and then everything's just covering its costs so if you've got kids and stuff obviously that makes that a lot harder but yeah knowing your hourly running cost is so so important if you are going to start any business because if you do open that business up you know from day dot you're not going to say to people oh look you know i've just started out i'm happy just to do this for you for cheaper i see that a lot and people end up just losing money because if you go in cheap from the start you're going to get customers that can't afford to pay more so then you're going to build yourself this big customer base and i've done this myself you're going to build this big customer base of people that can't afford to pay you more money so then you're going to raise your prices because you can't afford to work at cost forever and then you're going to lose all those customers because i'll go to the next guy that's just started out that's doing that exact same thing you know my current businesses are all run at I'm gonna be a little bit more expensive than everyone else, but I'm gonna provide the best service I possibly can. And I think that makes a huge difference. Because like, all right, fair enough, you might be able to go and get, say one of the things that I do at this shop is guard rolling. Um, and there is businesses out there that will roll your guards for 150 bucks for the rears, right? Um, generally, I don't know whether they've got clauses in there because generally more cars need more than just a basic roll. So I'm pretty upfront with people and I say, look, it's gonna be between 250 and 350 to do your rear guards because we're probably gonna to have to give them a little bit of a pump and we've got to adjust the bumper and clips and stuff here and there. Uh, so it costs a little bit more. Uh, so I lose a fair bit of work. I probably lose half of my work because of that because they go to these other shops or whatever. But the clients I do get pay me good money to do good work. And that's all I care about doing now because after so long without doing this, especially the guard rolling, I did take one job on and the guy's like, look, I just can't afford to pay the 300. He goes, "Can you? what can you do for, I think it was 180 or 200 bucks? And I said, look, just bring the car in, give me that and, I, and I'll see what, as, as, I'll do as much as I can for that, for that money. And then when he picked the car up, it wasn't the $300 package that I have. I gave him above $150 basic roll, but well below a full guard roll. And he was cranky at me about that. And I was like, well, you can't, you know, it was all cool in the end, you know, I talked him through it, but yeah, that's what you get when people can't afford to pay for your service. They're gonna uh, nitpick it. Whereas I find that anyone that can afford to pay my 150 bucks an hour to work on cars and, and, and I have my main business these days is doing work on, like I'm a plumber by trade. Yeah, I'm working on people's houses, fixing all sorts of crazy and unique things. Uh, when I charge 150 bucks an hour, uh, no one blinks an eye because I'm I'm coming in. You don't have to organise five different trades to do the same job. I just come in, get the job done, uh, work a little bit harder. So I probably get the you know as far as uh, your quoted price, I'll probably be fairly on par. It's just that I get it done quicker because I'm a quick worker. I think if you're happy to work a little bit harder, it's not so much that you have to work harder for less money. If you're happy to work hard for good money you always make money. Yeah, people ch might charge a bit less or whatever, but some people, like, and I've, I've been in business a long time, I've hired and fired a lot of people. I understand that people, it, it's hard to get good workers. So a lot of people out there are lazy. They'll say they can do the job, they'll take the job on, but yeah, then they'll start, you know, once they're a week into doing a full on big job, generally they've underquoted. Um, so then they start trying to figure out ways of, to reduce the costs. And I've seen this a lot of times, they'll just pull the pin on you, and walk away. And then you're left standing there going, well, now I've just paid this guy to do half a job. And now anyone that comes in to fix this job is gonna charge me the same amount as they were gonna originally. So now I'm really out of pocket. I said this in one of my other videos on my other channel the other day. Don't always go the cheapest quote, but don't always go the most expensive quote. You've really got to look. And I reckon just, just how they read or maybe talk to the person. If you can talk to them in person, that's always best. Judge how that person is because you'll probably find the guy that's in the middle. Like my gap with my maintenance business, I've found that I'm above a handyman, but below a builder, but I'm not charging that 88 to 100 an hour that the handyman charge. So I'm above them, but below them, and I seem to get all the work I quote. So yeah, bottom line guys, just sit down. Uh, I know it's hard if you haven't had a business before to figure out the hourly running costs of a business, but yeah, you. you you gotta try and think of all the little things that you're gonna to have to pay for, because that's what people don't, like you're not, when you lease a factory, you're not just leasing a factory. You know, you've got your factory, or like in my joint here, I've got my factory, but then on top of that, you've got your GST. So if it's advertised for say 600 bucks a week, then you've got to add another 60 for GST. Um, then you're gonna have body corporate fees on top of that, because most of these are complexes these days. And then on top of that, they're gonna want you to have building insurance on it. So there's a few grand a year. So it all adds up. You know, you might see it advertised for 30 to 35 grand, but then it's gonna cost you 50,000 
So you gotta go, all right, cool. That's gonna cost me a thousand bucks a week. That's just for the factory though. And then you've got, you know, if you need computer, internet, you're gonna have water. If you've got gas, if you do got anything that's cooking, um, you're gonna have your electricity bill. Like for me, I've got the forklift here because uh, you know you got to unload a truck every now and then. So now I've got to have the forklift here all the time. But yeah, every business is going to be different. But you just got to try and figure out as many as you can. Um, and then I generally add 400 a month. Once I've figured out all of the costs that I think I'm going to have, I add enough of 400 bucks a month for miscellaneous. Um, and generally, I end up coming on pretty on par. So yeah, I worked out this factory was going to cost me between 800 and a thousand dollars a week, and it cost me 800 bucks a week to have this shop without any staffing costs obviously so you know if I hired someone you did a be here for the week and then they cost me another 1200 bucks well then your weekly running cost is at two grand a week yeah any questions let me know um, I'm no business expert but I have been in business a long time um, I've made a lot of good moves and I made a lot of bad moves so I do have a lot of experience to share with people and I'm happy to make a video on anything that you might find helpful uh, this channel here is mainly for anything I do personally with my family. We go on adventures or I might go on an adventure by myself to clear my head because I find that in business uh, it's important sometimes to just get out in nature and just enjoy it. And then that's why I have my factory situated on the very edge of town next to trees and stuff. And my home is the exact same thing because I need to be around nature as much as I can. But yeah, so, but I'll also be posting videos like this that might help other people understand a little bit about yeah business and just you know maybe instead of watching some guy that you, you can't relate to that uh, runs a big accounting firm or something like that um, i'm just a tradesman and been a tradesman my whole life and i've got a lot of experience to share with you guys from you know turning over a lot of money and uh, losing a lot of money as well so if uh this video if you liked the video please leave me a comment and a like and um yeah let me know of anything you want to see in any future videos that i might talk about with business stuff so yeah, I appreciate you watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.